Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Chinese Tier 8 Premium Medium Tank, the 59 Pattern. Now this is a tank that you can get in the Season Pass for free, and is it a good tank? No, not really. Nope. Nope. It's 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 just alright. It's, it's, it's less than alright. It's not that great of a tank. Its mobility is a lot better these days, actually. It's got quite a few buffs, which makes it definitely a lot nicer to play than it would have been before them. But doesn't necessarily I think doesn't necessarily make it a good tank. To be honest, the one thing that this tank excels with is DPM. The the reload is really goddamn nice for 250 alpha. And that's the only thing I really truly like about the tank. I don't, I'm not a fan of the shell velocity because it's like 913 or something like that on the standard AP. Although it's faster on the heat randomly. But the, the AP shell velocity is just a little bit sad. The accuracy on the gun just leaves a little bit to be desired. Although you can make that better with the you know gun perks from the crew and vert stabs. But it can still be pretty derpy as well because of the shell velocity and stuff like that. You've not really got any armour even though they did buff the armour. And again we'll get into the buffs in a minute. But you still don't really have any armor. You have the drawbacks of the pattern turret with the big Ascapola that's really fairly easy to pen for people. And not really much turret armor in the front anyway. If you use your hull art, sorry, if you use your full gun depression, you can bounce the other shot off of the turret as long as you don't hit the cupola. But for the most part, it still gets absolutely butchered. And they took the worst part of the Type 59, which is the hull. And that is, you can side scrape, sure. You can side scrape, that's, that's fine. But in terms of hull armor, you don't really have much. And the reason I say it's the worst part of the Type 59 is because it's got the frontal fuel tanks and it gets set on fire through the front all the bloody time. And ammo racks through the drive wheels. So if a big caliber gun shoots you straight through the drive wheel, your head will pop off. And that happens a lot too. And that's one of the big frustrations with the tank. But if you can get this gun singing, Trust me, the gun with the DPM, it, well, the DPM is really nice. So if you get yourself in a position where you can keep farming, you, you'll have a pretty decent time with the 59 pattern. And, you know, you've got 212 pen on the standard AP, which, penetration, fantastic. 250 odd on the heat, I believe, which, again, is fine. You can pen most things with that heat. It's only really the super heavies that you're going to struggle with, the tier 10 ones anyway. So, you know, penetration doesn't hold you back. There's just all those little, little niggle. It's just like little niggles that this tank has that's just so frustrating to use and makes it not the best tank in the universe. But to be honest, I'm happy that they're giving it away for free because that means it's going to get played more because it is an absolutely dead tank. And by that, I mean that it basically never gets played ever by anyone. Nobody owns this tank. Most people own the Legion, which is the hero skin version of the tank because... Quite a few people learnt it, I think, a good two, three, four years ago. Very long time ago now. And you very rarely see those. And that's because the Legion is the exact same tank, but it doesn't have a silver bonus. But it has a crew bonus instead. Whereas this is just a standard premium tank that has the silver bonus and all that good stuff. So, yeah. But you, you never see it. So it's actually quite good that they're giving away this tank. I quite like that. It's better than having the Carnarvon Action 10, for example, which is another tank you can get free in this season pass, which has been earned, what, four times now, I think it is, something like that. So it's something different, right? And we'll take different. Different's great. So yeah, this is the first video I've done in about nine days, ten days, something like that. That's because I've been ill. Stupid illnesses again. And basically I couldn't string a sentence together without coughing my guts up for about ten minutes and then having the most cracked voice known to man and was completely... Yeah, you couldn't really tell what I was saying because it was just, you know, voice cracked. So yeah, we're back to hopefully n normal service resumed, just in the nick of time because I think there's a new tank out tomorrow as well. And hopefully we'll be able to start ploughing on getting these videos back out for you people. And we're going to start with the 59 pattern with some really good games in the 59 pattern as well, which is quite nice to show it off. And hopefully some things as well that show off how annoying it can be as well. But yeah, the 59 pattern got buffed. So what actually got buffed in the 59 pattern? It got buffed in that Chinese reforge they did. Oh, sorry, the Chinese medium reforge they did a little, little while ago. And it's Capola got buffed from 76 to 165 on the main body. And the gun mantlets are where the little machine gun is to 180 millimeters. Now, like I say, that is a lot better than it was. But it's still easily penable for pretty much most tanks it's going to face. It's only really tier 6s and 7s that are not going to truly penetrate that cupola. 
But even then, a lot of those probably still will go through it, because especially for the fire premium, it's still fairly easy for them to go through anyway. The big change really for the 59 pattern was the top speed buff and the engine power buff. Now it went from 50 kilometers an hour to 56 kilometers an hour, which that extra six kilometers an hour is a massive difference. And then the power to weight difference well from 14.3 to 16.5, helps it hit that top speed really easily. It was fairly sluggish beforehand. Now it's not that sluggish, which is decent. Thanks, Gun Handling, for, you know, proving me wrong, saying that you're terrible Gun Handling. Oh, there we go. It misses that one. Anyway. So, yeah, the, the power to weight is great now. And it hits this top speed of 56 really nicely. Before the buffs to its top speed, I would have said you would have definitely needed a traction system to give you that extra, extra top speed because it was pathetic but now yeah it's not too bad with the mobility and that's okay and i do like the changes to the tank i just wish they'd buffed the turret front to be better generally i mean sure have the weak cupola that's fine but make the turret front at least be able to take a lot of hits because it really can't and the, you know it's kind of sad I, w I wish it had actually got a you know buffed up to like say the, the pattern turret which is like you know 254 or something like that give it something because this type 59 hull likes to get set on fire a hell of a lot and it likes to burn and get ammo racked yep there's just a downside to the 59 hull unfortunately so in terms of a crew for the 59 pattern i run a pretty standard crew really i run born leader rapid reload six sense situational awareness trap mechanic Steady aim, snapshot, run and gun, and camouflage expertise. Now, I run camouflage expertise because I am a medium tank. And I want to... Well, generally, I want to make my tank just that little bit more stealthy. Because it helps in a lot of situations. Because this tank naturally doesn't really have that much camo. So I, I just want to help it out a little bit. And then all the gun perks, because I want to make this gun as good as possible. And... Yeah, because the, the, you really want to help the gun. And in terms of equipment, I run rammer, vert stabs, and optics. Optics to be able to spot for myself. Vert stabs to make this gun better. Because I did run it without vert stabs for quite a while. And the gun was just getting on my nerves so much. That I was like, I just need, it needs help. It needs all the help it can get. Because I did run camo net for a wee while. And I know I just dropped that for the vert stabs. But it's up to you. You might take the vert stab. You might take Kamenet instead of Vert Stabs or take Vents instead of Vert Stabs to make everything about the tank better and feel, you know, you know, this is actually all right. I'm just going to take that instead, right? It's totally up to you. But I would recommend taking Vert Stabs because I really didn't like the gun at all, to be perfectly honest. So this first game so far, we've got one tank left on the enemy team. We've done 4.5k damage so far with 756 assistance. We're trying to get some shots into this Lorraine here, but we've... Making an absolute hash of it. We managed to finally get a shot into him. The artillery doesn't pen it. Or did it pen it? I think that might have even been a pen from the bird. I'm not sure what the damage is on the bird anymore. And we do get to shut down that guy. We finished with five kills. 4.7k damage. The 756 assistance. Ace tanker. High caliber. The Pascucci's medal. 2k base XP. Really great game for the 59 pattern. Really nice game for it. Was top tier. But that's really where this tank is going to excel. When you start to face those tier 9s with the higher pen and the tier 10s, it's not going to be as pretty. And speaking of tier 9s, we're against tier 9s in this game. Yeah, because the thing is, this this tank is it's going to do well when you're facing tanks that you can pen fairly easily. Tanks that aren't going to guaranteed auto-pen you. And we'll be in the similar realms of DPM as you, right? When you start to face those tanks with the higher alpha, the ones that hit you for 400 odd... And easily pen you too. That's where you're going to start to struggle. And yeah. It's not going to be the most fun time for you in general. You want to try and play it more like a flank and medium at that point. When you're facing the... It's, it's different situations, right? When you're facing different tiers, you play a lot differently. Well, you, you play depending on what your opponents are. So you're more likely to be aggressive when you're top tier. But when you're bottom tier, you're more likely to just sit back that little bit further and not be in the face of an IS-7 and go, hi IS-7, I'm a friend. Oh no, that, that hurt, you know. Thanks Gun Handling for proving me wrong once again. That was a really nice shot from the gun on that LHMTV. It actually tracked him in place as well, but he's repaired it now. We get a nice shot into his side. I'm just waiting for the reload to go, because I'm like, I just want to get rid of this little pest, and unfortunately that shot flies into the dirt. It's what it is. Now we've got an Indian Panzer in front of us. We managed to get a nice big shot through his turret there. 
And we're just being fairly aggressive in front of these guys at the minute because, oh, what a lovely shot it is on the LHM TV. We managed to get that shot into him. We're just being aggressive at the minute because we want to try and keep pumping shots into them while they're in a vulnerable position there. But the artillery starting to put shots at us and that can only Panzer 105 there that was spotted up that way makes me go, no, I can't stay here anymore because that guy's just going to pop over and slap a big shot at us. Talking of big guns, that's an ISU 152. I don't want that because that guy could hammer rack me and that will hurt. We get a nice shot through the drive wheel of the Canonian Jagdpanzer there, which actually <laughs> retracted him. I think he put his tracks back on and then just as we fired at his track, it ended up keeping him there and he got shut down. Now the EBR 90 is coming in. It's like, Mr. Wheelie Boy, are we okay, sir? We get a nice shot through his side, and I think he took a few hits into his wheels there, which just completely wrecked his chances of ever getting away. And there goes the wheelie boy. We got detected a little bit, which made me hesitate, because again, I don't want to take the hit from that ISU 152. That would not be a good time. So we're going to take the low ground, where the ISU is going to struggle to be able to hit us. The cruncher ends up getting... That's overkill from that Storm Tiger P. The... Storm Tiger P ends up finishing off the cruncher, so we couldn't quite get there. But we've loaded the heat rounds to be able to go through the 50 TP's lower plate. Because the 50 TP is lower plate, we can't go through with standard rounds, we need the premium. But even the premium was orange there, and we're going for the lower plate, the T95 now as well, which, with these heat rounds, we might be able to go through, but to be honest, it's dubious. To be honest, the T95 frontally for us as a tier 8 premium tank in this 59 pattern, that T95 is just not is just not going to work. We're just not going to be able to go through him unless we get his us, yeah unless we get his side. And we're looking for the shots into the capole, and you can see we're just failing. It's just not going through. That's because we can't pen it. Um, we're, it's just futile trying to go through that guy's capola. But the IC152 tries to poke up, and well, we couldn't quite get the shot into him. We're up to two and a half k damage with 1700 assistance so far. The Indian Panzer on the other side of this ridge is now all alone and. Well, what happens to people that are all alone? Unfortunately, they die very, very quickly, and our whole team pushed over. But now, they've only got a good seven tanks left, and we know where they pretty much all are. They're all on the other side of this river. So what I want to do is try and get close to these buildings over here and see if we can get some cheeky shots at the sides of these guys. And if I can't, I'm going to push straight across the river. I'm going to push straight across the river and try my best to get to the ridge line directly in front of me. So I can push under the ridge line there. I might be able to spot anything that's sitting along the two line and therefore get assistance. And if not, I will be able to push under the ridge line and get safe from anyone that might be in that direction. The Diamondback gets spotted behind the buildings here. And also there's another TD in the corner. And it's like, okay, that guy can shoot me. That Waffle Panzer IV tries to get a shot at us. But it's, again, getting under this ridge line. Like I say, we push to the ridge line as quickly as possible, and we basically means that he can't shoot us. We unfortunately missed a shot at the Carnarvon there. That's where the gun derps out a little bit. But now we've got rear shots at this Diamondback, and he's the one that's holding up some of the team on the bridge. And they're going to struggle with a Diamondback there. So what we're going for now is the shots into his drive wheels to try and track him, or the back end anyway. And unfortunately, we don't quite get to track him, but we do manage to put a load of shots in to sh well, get that guy shut down, which then helps my TD and heavy tank on the other side of the bridge push over. Now there's the Waffle Panzer IV over here. It's like, Mr. Waffle Panzer IV, I've got a big HE round for you. 329, that's quite nice. And this is where I'm saying the DPM is nice, Rook. 5.5 second reload is really goddamn good. And it's definitely nice. I was going to go charge in on that Waffle Panzer IV, but the SU-130PM and the artillery on the other side of the ridge makes me second guess it and think, no, nah, nah, I'm not about that life. I'm not doing that. We do still have this HE round in. And I was thinking possibly I could pen the back of that Carnarvon, so I couldn't, but he dies anyway. And now we're going after these lightly armoured tank destroyers. Because it's an SU-130PM, it's a Waffle Panzer IV. I can pen them both with HE. May as well keep it in. Same as the artillery. I can pen that with HE as well. And we're just going around. It's like, hello friends, where are we? Oh, we're trying to take a really tight snapshot at that SU-130PM there. It didn't quite work. Poor shot, really. And now this SU-130PM is coming for me. There's no chance I'm going to bounce this guy. So what do I do? I bounce him. Well, I, d I didn't technically bounce him. I, he actually tracked me. That's where wiggling comes into play, right? Because you just wiggle, wiggle, and you never know. Sometimes they'll make, muck up the shot. Now, this Waffle Panzer IV goes to the drink. So I'm thinking, no, sir, you're not getting out this way. I track him. Now, I know, since I've tracked him, if he drowns now, I will get his whole tank in damage. You can't get away from me, sir. 
And there we go. 661 damage to him without actually shooting him again. Because we tracked him in the water, which counts it as my tracking him, immobilizing him there to die. We finished the game with two kills, 5.2k damage, 2.5k assistance, ace tanker, the high caliber confederate. Nearly 2.5k base XP, a really great game for the 59 pattern in the tier 9 game. And yeah, that's my advice to you people. If someone tries to drown themselves, track them, because you will get all of their health in damage without having to do too much. And that is definitely a very nice thing to do, especially when someone tries to just end themselves. So yeah, that's the 59 pattern, not the greatest of tanks. As always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah.